In my last videos, we built a CRUD API using vertical slice architecture and made it even cleaner with minimal APIs and Carter. But here's the problem. What happens if someone sends invalid data? Now, in this video, I will show you how to protect your API with fluent validation, making it more robust, reliable, and developer friendly. You can get the complete source code in the video description. So now let's get started after hitting the like button. So you see the project here. If you want to have the deep dive, please check out the last videos about this series or from this series. What I want to do is just add fluent validation real quick to the create character use case. As you can see, we are actually uh, using here CQRS. So we have this command with a name and a class. So when we want to create a character, we have to enter the name and the class. And then we also have this handler here grabbing this command and returning this game character after adding it to the database. But now what happens if the user enters no name, the name is empty or the class is empty, right? So for this simple case, let me show you how to add fluent validation now. What you want to do is right here, we can add a validator class. So public class, call this validator. And Copilot is already suggesting something here, but let's do this manually by, in fact, adding abstract validator, inheriting from that. And here now we add the command. So we know that the command shall be validated, right? With control and period, we can add the quick fix menu and see we have to install the package fluent validation. So let's find and install the latest one. And after installation is done, we add the reference here. So using fluent validation, it is we have no error anymore. And now as you can see here, let's just uh, use or apply this suggestion from a copilot. What we can see here is we add the constructor public validator. And then here we can add the rules. So now with a lambda expression, we say for the name of our command, if this thing or this does not have, or this is not allowed to be empty. That's the right way to say it. And in this case, then if it is empty, we get the message name is required. And same thing for the class, right? If you want to enter this uh, manually, as you can see here, we have the suggestion not empty. And the tooltip now says, defines a not empty validator on the current rule builder. Validation will fail if the property is null, an empty string, white space, an empty collection, or the default value for the type. I think this was important to tell you here. So this is what not empty does. And then here with message, there it says specifies a custom error message to use when validation fails only applies to the rule that directly precedes it. All right. So for exactly that rule here, we get this message name is required. And same thing if the class is empty, we get class is required. But with that, we only have our validator so far. So we also have to use it. How would we do that? Well, here in our handler, we could use a primary constructor or we do it old school, let's say, where we inject the DB contact. And now we also also have to inject the validator or the I validator interface will be used here. So first we add another private read only here, private read only I validator command validator. This is correct. And now let's inject this thing here with I validator command. That's correct. This is our validator. And here now we set this validator. Perfect. So with that, now we have our validator and now we can also use this thing. So now here in the handle method, before we do anything, we want to validate what the user sent us, right? So here now we say var validation result is a wait and then we use our validator and then with validate async, we will validate the request here. This is important that we enter this request. And then we can check if the actual validation result is valid. Copilot again making su suggestions here. So let's apply that. And this is actually true. So if not, if is valid is false, then in this case, we say we throw a validation exception. And this is nice here. We can add the validation result errors there. Another option would be if this would be a web API, for instance, in a controller or a minimal API, then we can uh, return a bad request and add the errors there as well. 
maybe it's not the best for the user, so you should change that maybe. But for developing purposes, I think this is totally fine. So with that, we are actually done in our create character class here in our use case with the handler and the command. But now we also have to register this thing or the validator. And for that, there's an option to register actually any validator. So if you, for instance, if you have a look in the solution explorer, we have get character by the level up character, right? And if you have any kind of other use cases here, other implementations and validations, then for them, you don't want to register every single validator, right? So for that, we go to the program CS. And in here now, what we can actually do is here, builder services, and then there is the method add validators from assembly. So from our complete project, if you want, but this is not here yet because we need more than just the Fluent Validation Package. So this is important. Visual Studio wouldn't give you a suggestion, or in my case, it didn't give me a suggestion as well. So let's just right click and manage the new get packages for this project here. And then what we have to add is when we just add Fluent Validation, then you see we have Fluent Validation ASP.NET Core, but this is the old one right here it says this package version is deprecated. So we already installed with a quick fix menu, right? We installed Fluent Validation, but then to register this and use dependency injection, we need this package here, Fluent Validation Dependency Injection Extension. So let's install this thing, all right? And now we can go back to the program CS. All right, and now here we add first the reference to Fluent Validation and here I want to use add validators from assembly. And here we add type of program, program assembly. Don't need this here. And we're done. All right. Now let's test this. And by the way, as always, if you want to get the complete source code, check out the link in the video description below. And there we are localhost, scalar v1. And now create character endpoint it is we test the request as you can see here name and class is empty we hit send and we get the exception name is required class is required what happens if i just enter raceland for instance hit send and it says class is required and now i enter mage hit send and raceland is created Beautiful. So this works now also with validation. Again, the code is in the video description. If you want to download it, feel free to do so. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you did. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.